Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the series, Not What I Expected. And today's uh, topic we are talking about is people. God, these people are not what I expected. These are not the people I expected to encounter throughout this year. How many of us, right, throughout the year made new, maybe new acquaintances or met new people or maybe lost some people due to sicknesses or other reasons or, or people that just we just disconnected with? Or maybe because we've been home so much and been able to be on social media and had the phone or email next to us, we were able to reach out to those that hadn't we hadn't talked to in a while. 2020 has been an, an up and down year, right? With so many crazy things going on. But I think it's been a great time for us to be able to connect, to really stop from our fast paced life and connect with people. The story we've been talking about in the nativity, we just spoke about Mary and Joseph and their conundrum in their situation that it wasn't what they expected. And here we come to talking about the people that showed up to that moment. We're told in the book of Luke that the angels were moving around and flying around looking to share the good news that Jesus, the Messiah, had just been born to Mary and Joseph. And as they're looking, it seems as though there's no one in the whole city that is looking or waiting for the Messiah. Though the Jewish people had all the prophecies pointing to where exactly the Messiah would be born, people were not even waiting for that to happen. The angels then come upon a field where there are some shepherds that were tending over their flock. They're watching over their sheep. And, and as they're there, it seems and we can tell that they are praying and th probably talking about the prophecy and saying, hey, is this the time? Are we close? The angel shows up. And the first thing that always gets me that's super funny is that the angel says, don't be afraid. Of course, I mean, if your angel shows up to you in its light, in its glory, I mean, the first thing you do is... Uh, you're going to be shocked and afraid. And the angel says, don't be afraid. I bring you good news. And then the angel goes on to share what that good news is. The good news that will be great joy, that will cause great joy for all people. This is the good news of the gospel. The good news that we are able and privileged to share, especially in our Christmas time, that there is good news of great joy for all people. But it's what's very interesting is that the receivers of the initial telling of the good news were not the theologians of the day. They were not the priests or, or the pastors, and this speaks to me, right, as a pastor, or even the religious leaders and, and, and or high officials or, or any, any, any person of prominence around the land, but rather it was to lowly people, people down below in, 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 in the, the hierarchy of people and positions and, and, and jobs and, and occupations the angels show up to shepherds to tell them the good news and the reason they show up to shepherds is because they were willing to listen they were waiting expectantly for the Messiah and so as we look in the past year I'm thinking to myself what do I do when the people God brings into my life aren't the people you wanted in it. I mean, can you imagine Mary and Joseph, they look around, everything is full in Bethlehem and they expect someone to come. They're maybe thinking of a delegation or, or, or some high up people, the priests and the prophets to show up and run and say, he's here. But instead what they have is some smelly old shepherds, maybe some young boys, right? Or, or some older, a mixed crowd showing up to see if this is truly the Messiah. They're surprised and they're probably thinking, God, this is not the people we expected to show up to welcome the king of the universe, the Messiah to this world. What do you do, right? When the people God brings into your life aren't the people you wanted in it. Maybe you expected to be a friend or to meet this acquaintance that was going to hook you up with a job. Or, or maybe you wanted to hang out with that person because they have a cool car. Or you can be, uh, I don't know. You just didn't expect that the, you didn't receive the people you thought were you were going to receive in your life. Or maybe the people you used to have aren't around anymore. They've walked out of your life. They, they've moved on. They, they've joined other friend circles. You know, what do you do when the people around you are not those that you expected that they would be? If allowed, God will surround you with people that will help you excel that will help you grow, that will help you in pushing you to connect deeper with Him. And so I, I want to challenge you for the rest of 2020 and the rest of the next year that we're embarking on, that who knows what is over there and what people are waiting for us to encounter and dialogue with and connect with. I want to challenge you to surround yourself with people that want to be there. 
You see, that was the good thing about the shepherds. The shepherds wanted to be present in this time, in this situation. They were willing to understand and hear what the angels were saying. They, were, they had open hearts and open minds, and they were willing to go and visit and see where the baby was. And then when they got there, they see a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in linen clothes, and they realize, wow. This is the Messiah. So surround yourself with people that want to be there. I want you also to surround yourself with people that desire to live like Jesus. Because what that will do is that that will encourage you to also live like Jesus. When you're surrounded in a group you will be uh, that, that, that lives a certain way, you will be encouraged to live that way as well. I want you also to surround yourself with people that are driven and that will hold you accountable. The people that have a drive to be great, to become good, to share love and to serve others because that will encourage you and help keep you accountable to do the same exact thing. Surround yourself with people that love Jesus more than anything else, more than pursuing these fancy clothes and cars and makeup line, more than being viral on TikTok or Instagram, more than anything, surround yourself with people that love Jesus. We have a Spanish, we have a saying in Spanish that goes like this, Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres, which translated to English means, tell me who you surround yourself with and I'll tell you who you are. You see, the people that surround us, the people that make up our, our, our group and our company that we uh, uh, identify with and, 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 and hang out with and, and spend life and do life with really begins to shape and mold us. See, the only ones who received the first announcement of Jesus' birth were those waiting for it. So I want you to think for this next couple of weeks and, and, and time as we're closing up 2020, think of those who helped you get through this year. You've done it already in last week's video talking about last year and seeing the ups and downs, but I want you to look back in the year and see who was there to help you get through the year. And I want you not just think about them. I want you to call them. I want you to reach out to them and say, thank you for helping me and for praying for me. Thank you for connecting me with someone that had a job. Thank you for telling me where the food pantry was. Thank you for checking in on me when I was going through very hard times and I was in a dark place in my life. I want you to call them and thank them. Encourage them as well and say, look, I don't know what you're facing. I know we're going through a lot of craziness, but I want you to know that I'm here for you just like you were here for me. And I want you to pray with them. And then I also want you to think of those you lost this year, maybe to sickness and death, maybe to COVID-19 or other sudden emergencies and things that happened. Think of those and, 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 and remind yourself of the legacy and the impact that they had in your life. But also think of those who walked out or moved on in your life. And I want you to pray for them. If comfortable and able, and if it's still a healthy situation, reach out to them and pray with them. But I want you to think of those that are no longer with you, that for different reasons, left your life. Pray for those individuals. And I want you to pray these next two prayers, that God makes you a person that others want to surround themselves with. Not just a person that is willing to see and, and has open eyes to see who are good company out there. No, no. Pray that God makes you good company. Pray that God works in you so that others may surround themselves with people like you that will draw them closer to God. And secondly, pray that God leads you to the right people next year. We have no idea what 2021 is going to come. And if 2020 was any lesson for us, 2021 will not will be not what we expected. And we're going to meet people that we did not that are not expecting to meet, whether in good or bad ways, but I want you to pray that God leads you to the right people next year, to the people that will help you get through next year, to the people that you will help get through next year. So no matter what we're facing now, knowing that this is not what I expected, the people around me are not what I expected. The person that reached out to me when I was in need was not who I expected. The person that was supposed to be there when I was in need was not there, and that was not expected. No matter what happens, God is always there, and He always shows up, and He will bring people around you that you did not expect to lift you up and journey with you in the journey of life. Hope you're blessed, and we will see you next week.